pipe, zigzag, spiral, half lock, diaper, all down. We are on to the drop fold. All right, guys, I'm going to start this video off just by saying if you guys haven't seen the previous fold videos that I have done in the past couple weeks, I highly, highly, highly recommend checking those out before this video. I'm not trying to pander for views, I swear. I'm just saying right now, um, drop folds and then the folds that we're going to do next week, which is inert folds, they have a lot of similarities to the past folds that we've looked at. And in some ways, they're almost kind of the same. So in order to understand these fully, I'm going to be making a lot of references back to some of the things that we looked at when we were drawing those folds. So it probably and most likely would help out a lot if you guys have that knowledge. For those of you who have been rocking with me, let's go through this. We're talking about drop folds today. So drop folds, as you guys can see by this diagram, you might be wondering, wait a second, haven't we done something like this? This is looking pretty familiar. It's looking like pipe folds, right? Well, you're not wrong. There are some differences, but a lot of them are similar. There's some similarities here that you're going to see in all these fold shapes. And you can even see in the diagram right here that Barbara gives us that she's pointing out that these are pipe folds, right? She has diagrams pointing to these areas that are pipe folds, but these pipe folds are being <laughs> dropped from the body. I'm trying to explain this in the, the best way I can. It's going to get confusing though. So I'm just going to say straight up, they're dropping from the body, um, which is what's giving us the drop fold. So generally the drop fold is a piece of cloth or fabric, right? That's what we're looking at in these videos is folds that is dropped from a single point of tension. Now that point of tension can be anything. It could be a pin in the wall, like this example. It could be a kneecap right there, which is creating this drop fold down here. Okay, um, and sometimes these subsequent drops right here. And then it can also be something like a waist or, you know, you could say a shoulder shape, depending on what kind of fabric we're using, right? So, because all of the folds are coming off of this point of tension. Similarly, we have all these folds coming off of this point of tension here. So then now you might be asking, what exactly makes this any different from a pipe fold? Well, it doesn't really. So a pipe fold would be a very similar thing, right? Where it comes down and we get some sort of fold fabric like that. And then you have another one coming in front, something like that, right? That's an extreme example, but this would be a pipe fold. When we're thinking about pipe folds, we're generally thinking of some sort of cone kind of shape, right? So a cone shape being with this nice round bottom. But if we're thinking back over at the diagram of a drop fold, Look at how these folds fall here in the diagram. They're pretty flat, right? You guys see that? So it's like if you took a cone, right? So we have an ice cream cone flipped upside down and then you smashed it. So now, instead of getting that nice round shape, you're getting something that's really, really squished in and flat and almost creating like squared off edges. So taking a look at this diagram, you can see that drop folds are created along with other folds, right? So this is why I kind of wanted to say that thing in the beginning about you guys checking out the other videos if you haven't, because they're not necessarily built on their own and they're not necessarily not pipe folds. I hope I don't, I'm not confusing you guys by saying this, but if you check out this diagram right here, we have some drop folds going on, very similar to the pipe fold method, very similar to the pipe fold method. But then as we come down here, Look, we have some of these half locking shapes right here, right? Um, and also some diaper fold looks. But this is still creating what is known as that drop fold kind of method. So really we just wanna think that drop folds are when something is being pulled down or just taken down by gravity, not necessarily pulled. <clears throat> or it can also be in this example right here, where if you look at the flag, this edge right here that is being created Look at this, you guys see how this is nice and flat? It's not really um, cone shaped, right? So we're not really getting that really nice kind of cone shape that we get from pipe folds. It's actually kind of flat and falling against itself. 
So this would be considered drop volts, even though it's flying into the wind. But again, all we need is that one point of tension, which is going to be right here, the flagpole. And then everything is going in this direction. So lastly, let's take a look at this artist example here of a charcoal drawing of drop folds. And so what you can see is the reason that this one is being called the drop fold, similar to if you guys can peek right through here and see this lady's dress in this drawing, because it's reacting with its environment. Look, it's hitting the chair here, and then we're starting a whole new point of tension coming through from these areas, which are leading down and then giving us these folds that are then folding against each other and creating these nice angular drop folds, right? These aren't really round cone-shaped folds. Um, and you can see within here too, we're getting our zigzag folds. Um, if this was someone folding their body here, you get a half block fold. Here you have a pipe fold right here of fabric falling over. Um, so this is kind of why like in the past videos I've been saying like, we're gonna start adding these things together. So it might get a little tricky if you don't know everything that we've been discussing in the past. Now that I have you guys thoroughly confused, let's take a look at some pictures and make this hopefully make sense to you guys. Again, all I'm gonna say is just think of drop folds as pipe folds that have been flattened. If you can think of it as that, you're pretty good and set to go. Here we have an example of drop folds that are kind of in the form of a drapery study, right? So you can see here, we're getting these nice draped folds and then again, they're just kind of collapsed onto each other, right? So it's a nice squished cone shape. Um, so we're gonna be looking for these examples here and we're gonna go ahead and draw this drapery study in here. And then we're gonna look at some examples of how you might find drop folds on clothing that are fitted on people. All right, so to keep my art teacher license, we are gonna start with the drapery, right? So um, what we're gonna do is obviously this piece of fabric is folded over um, this black block that is in the picture. And just like we would draw a cylinder underneath the coat of someone's arm, or their, I mean, someone's jacket, right? Uh, we are going to draw what this piece of fabric is falling over. So you don't have to go into detail with it, just, you know, kind of block something in real quick. Um, if you guys are interested in learning how to draw something in perspective, you can always check out my perspective videos after you finish this video. So once we get in our shape, make sure we can fit it on our paper. I always have a problem drawing too big, so that's why I'm very thankful for digital programs. But now we're gonna go ahead in and draw our cloth. So where I was kind of thinking right up there is how does the fabric bend over this block? And you can see it's not a hard bend, right? Um, this looks like a like a thick, um, I, I don't know if I'd call it wool, but almost like a woolish kind of material. So it's not gonna have such like a delicate, really intricate flat kind of fold like you might get with um, a softer material like a silk or something, right? So again, materials always play a, a part when we're learning about folds, when we're learning about clothes. Always be thinking, get in mind what is the material you're drawing, what's the thickness, and it's gonna kind of identify what you're drawing a little bit more, right? How it folds, how it bends. Okay, so here I'm thinking about those flattened cone shapes like I was talking about, right? And then that last one hits the ground, right? So I really wanted to have an angle change on that one and show it nice and flat. And then I can come back to that. I'm still trying to think of just big shapes, chunk it in a little bit. I'm getting a little stuck on the detail more than I should here. But um, it just kind of, you know, sometimes it's like a connect the dot situation where I drew one of the folds of the drop fold. And then I wanted to draw that fabric going up. So here I'm trying to find that fold to the left here, where you get that little bit of a pinched piece of fabric, right? It's kind of creating a pipe. So again, remember those pipe folds are very relevant when we're talking about drop folds. Um, and we're going in and separating these shapes. Remember with folds too, you wanna to be able to show that they're separated from each other, right? The folds aren't just one piece of fabric. I mean, they all come in one piece of fabric, but the folds are separate of each other, right? There's a drop fold over here and a drop fold over there. So now I'm finding the rest of the fabric here. 
and I'm probably making it a little bit bigger than it is in the picture. But really, it doesn't matter actually how big I make something because as long as I'm starting to understand the folds, I can make it believable. So another importance of being able to draw these folds in there. So we got the last piece in there. We can throw in this little triangle of a piece there. And from here, all we really have to do is go in and draw in that bottom fold. And we could be done, but we can always add more details on this piece as well. Since this is a drapery piece, I'll go in and add a little more detail on here just to have a bit of a finished base to start off of for this video. And then we can kind of reference this in our mind for the rest of the stuff that we draw. Even though the rest of the stuff we're looking at is more um, how someone could wear a drop fold, so to speak. So, okay, I have some of these tassels in here, so I'm just gonna draw them in as big old shapes. I don't wanna draw each tassel, at least not right away. It's just gonna look like spaghetti is flying off of this piece of fabric. So, um, similar to hair, you don't wanna draw every strand of hair um, because it just doesn't look right. It always sounds like a good idea, but it never comes out the way you want it to. So here I'm thinking about how that fabric is folding over itself. How much of it can I see? Because those tassels are kind of in the way, but I can make it up because I know what is going on with the fabric, right? That's the whole point of what we're doing here, getting some cloth and fabric confidence in our work. So drawing in the shapes of some of it here. And you guys can see, I'm just kind of indicating. I don't want to go overly detailed with it because again, I really don't care too much about that. In this video, we're just focused on the drop folds. So move past those tassels. And what we're going to do is start to tone in our picture. So you want to think about the, the fabric is like a, it's like an off orange or like you could say like a really orangey brown, right? Kind of like a sienna tone, I suppose. And what I want to think about is if I put this picture in black and white, what tone would that come out in, in terms of gray? So I gave it a nice light gray, because I'm also thinking about the comparison of how it's on that really, really dark, um, I would say black or almost black um, block behind it. And I can see that that black block is a lot darker than the fabric, right? So I know that the fabric isn't any darker than a light gray at most. And here I'm gonna go in and find my shadow shapes. This is what defines the space in between the fabric from each other when it's folding over one another. And again, like I've said in all these videos, Mr. Broken Record right here, but folds in fabric are more so defined by highlights and shadows, not so much line work. So that's why line work will always look okay. It'll look pretty good, but it's always gonna look better if you guys can start to understand a little bit about tone and shadowing and then placing your highlights as well in your work. So we're just kind of coming in here. This is the most detail I'm gonna get in any of these. I just kind of, again, wanted to throw this up front. So if you guys do want to apply this to any of the other drawings that are coming up, go for it, right? Like there's never too much practice that you can do. But here, I just kind of wanted to give you guys an example. Last touch here, I'm gonna throw in some highlight shapes. And from there, after we get just a few highlights, we don't want to go overboard, we're going to move on to our next drawing. So what other examples can we look at? Well, we have a scarf right here on a really, really light mannequin, if you guys can see it. So that is my only claim to fame, that this is not a drapery study. It is on a human figure, right? So remember, we want to think there is one point of tension. Obviously, we have two here, but they are separate from each other. That creates the drop fold. So we're going to go for both sides. And then you guys can kind of see how these folds are really collapsed against each other. I like this one because you can see through the fabric. Don't let it confuse you too much. It can become a lot of lines when you're drawing and get a little confusing. But just try to see those collapsed folds against themselves. Okay, so let's start this off by drawing our two points of tension here, <clears throat> right? And we're going to be drawing both of these sides. So you guys don't have to, um, you know, focus too much on this. You guys can think of it as a nice broad shape, but the part that goes across the neck right there, I just added a little bit of detail on there. Um, again, I'm a detail junkie, so I cannot avoid it if it's there. 
Um, it's almost just like a part of my brain that says you have to finish this. It's right in front of you, right? So if you guys are like that too, I understand. So I'm just kind of drawing in some of this stuff. Um, if you guys are curious and you guys might be pointing this out in your head right now, what is being created right there is a very tightly folded diaper fold. Um, you guys should be able to see that in there. If you're familiar with the fold video that we did last week, and I am definitely spending way too much time on this and I need to move down. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit and let's focus on the length of this scarf. So going down, I just wanna think about the simple shape, right? What is the most important thing about a drop fold? It's that it's dropping. So I just wanna kind of get that feeling of it being dropped down. Think about where it's connecting into the scarf there, right into the neck piece. It's folding out, and then I can go in and start to find details after. It's always a good idea when you're trying to draw a picture as a whole. So for instance, I'm trying to draw the scarf with both sides, right? To go in and draw them as a big, simple shape first, so that I completely understand the size that they should be compared to each other, right? You can see the one on the left, a little bit wider than the one on the right. Now imagine if I drew the one on the right and I went full detail, everything, and then I drew the one on the left and I messed up and it made it too thin. And my intention was to copy this exactly, right? That's where you don't want to get stuck. So that's why I always, always say, even though I have trouble with it too, try to find the simple shapes first, then come back in and add your detail. You're going to be so much happier with yourself later after doing that. <clears throat> so here I was able to find my two shapes. And now I'm going in and adding detail onto the left one first. The one on the left has a little less of the showing drop folds. So you can see some of them. Um, we just don't get as much or I guess as dramatic of a zigzag as we do on the right side. So just kind of place those in. I'm not going to mess around too much with the whole transparent uh, transparency of this image. I don't really want to get too confused with that or too bogged down on that. So just kind of looking for what's important, where it's folding. Um, look for that dark seam, right? That dark green seam where it's nice and solid versus the transparent. All right, so here on the right side, I'm going to come in and find this really fun zigzag shape. And we're going to come through. We can see that it pokes a little bit over the edge, comes around. And this has a nice scoop to it. So this is a very light material, obviously, being a transparent material. Usually those are a little bit um, stiffer in a way, if that makes sense. So like they kind of hold sh their form, hold their shape a little bit. They don't collapse so well against each other. There's a lot of fabric here, so it's being pulled down. Um, so we get to see a little bit of that drop and a little bit of that collapsing, but you can see that the fabric is kind of fighting to hold its form a little bit. All right, so now that I have my zigzag in there, I'm just gonna find the rest of my residual lines what's helping to create it, what it's built off of. And we're just gonna build it back up to the top. There we go. Now being the detail junkie that I am, I could not resist. I left this in here for you guys with me just going right back up to the top and having to finish it off for no good reason. But you know, the details there and I just had to get it in. But we also have to move on, so let's do that. No red marker for this one because, well, it's pretty much the same thing as the scarf, but just from a different view and just from a different accessory. So I felt like we could just jump straight into this one. So we have a headband here. It's tied around her hair, just kind of in a knot. And this is a super, super simple drop fold because we don't have a really long piece of fabric. We don't have a whole ton of zigzags going down but this is still a drop fold. And you can see mainly on the left one where the fabric is folding and dropping over itself. It's collapsed on this bandana material, right? Which is also a little bit thicker, kind of like the last um, fabric that we looked at. So it does try to hold its shape a little bit. <clears throat> see here, you can already see going against my one rule, which is to drop both sides before you go detail on um, any of the sides, right? So. Do as I say, not as I do, I suppose. But, but in this case, it was such a small <laughs> fabric and it's mainly based on just kind of like 
the hair shape around it. I think it's okay. I can kind of get away with cheating my own rule, I suppose. Or maybe I'm just making excuses for myself. All right, so now grabbing in that other side, we are going to draw it down, kind of compare the length there of both of them. And once I see that they're both about the same size, we're just gonna kind of draw that in. You can see that the right side is obviously a little bit thinner. It looks like it might be holding a little more of its form in terms of that cone shape. So it could just be one really big pipe fold, right? And then I'm gonna come in there and look for how that fabric interacts with the top <clears throat> and throw it in there. So this one felt really simple and you know, sometimes that's fine. It's okay for something to be simple. I think it's a big thing as artists too, where we try to overcomplicate things um, just because we think it has to be and it really doesn't. You can see that right now, this reads 100%. I could come in and add a tone. I could come in and add shadow, not necessarily needed. So um, just since this kind of went by so fast, I thought I would add in some of the hair. And you see the hair kind of let me know that I was missing a piece too. Um, just that little triangle piece right there on the fabric. And you can go in and add the hair. <clears throat> if you guys haven't seen my video on hair, um, check it out, but you're kind of getting a sneak peek here where you're just gonna go in and draw the big shape and then you can come in and add your detail. It's almost like I keep saying that over and over. Hmm. Well, must be nothing. So anyways, go ahead in there and add in the detail on your hair if that's what you're going for. And let's move on to our next drop fold. So if you guys remember from the diagram in the beginning, where the pants drop off of the knee creates drop fold. Um, it's a one fold kind of deal usually. Sometimes it results in a little more folds, um, but typically, you get a, a drop fold and it's connected into a cylinder shape, but so is a lot of the fabric that we looked at today, like the drapery studies, right? So this is what the fold on the right leg looks like. It was a little too flat and a little too simple. So I didn't want to go that direction. I just wanted to show you that it is there as well. This one's kind of creating more of a classical drop fold here where you can see it's creating this really beautiful cone shape that comes off from the point of tension, which is originated at the knee. So that's what we're going to be drawing. So essentially we're just drawing um, someone with their leg bent and we're drawing a bell shape at the bottom kind of, right? A long bell shape or a long cone. So again, we're just going to remember when we're drawing in limbs, they're just cylinder shapes. So it's coming towards me. So we're drawing foreshortening. And so I don't see too much of that leg. And then I'm going to draw this leg going back again for shortening. So we don't see full length of the leg. You can obviously see that the leg on the right side of this guy is longer, but it's not for shortened in space. So here we go. And now that I kind of have an indication of the leg in there, I don't have to get all these details. I'm just going to go in and draw my drop fold. What I do want to say while we're drawing this guy here, pretty simple, right? So I don't think I need to keep explaining what's going on. It's insanely hard to find these um, examples on the whole like business suit kind of spectrum in the modern era of clothing, which in my opinion looks way, way better than what you might've seen in suit styling and stuff in the past. I don't think I personally, personally, just my personal opinion, I don't really like the super baggy men clothes look, but, um, so what I try to do for these videos is I try to find a modern example. So here's a more modern fitted suit. And it's still creating that drop fold. But if you guys were to look at an example of maybe someone from the 50s, 60s, 70s, etc., that point in time, or even like, you know, the 30s when they were wearing really big suits, right? And you can find a picture of them sitting, you're gonna find a really big drop fold, just like how this guy is sitting right here, just how we're getting this small little cylinder shape, the small cone shape. You're gonna find a really nice big one. And it's actually gonna look like it's completely generated up there by the knee instead of kind of being a little bit more on the beginning of his ankle. But again, we had a very simple example here. So I thought, well, maybe let's just go in and add a little something to it, right? So it's a silver suit. We can tell that that means it's a gray. And then how do we shade our cones, right? We know that it is shaded on both sides and then you have a nice light cylinder of light right through the middle there. 
and then just kind of same thing with the leg so it is another cylinder as well and guys we have one more example here of where we see drop folds All right, so here we have a really nice example. Um, you see this point of tension that I'm drawing right now, and then everything that comes off of it, because it has like a ruffled bottom on this dress, is creating drop folds. Um, these drop folds are a little bit more sporadic than what we've been looking at because the ruffle texture of the dress is kind of all over the place, but you can see if you can look at it as a simple shape, well, you can find those drop folds. So let's go ahead in there and give this a practice. Now, I am kind of finding my leg shape here, right? So I'm gonna find the bottom half of her body. I'm not drawing the full pose today. It is a really nice pose though. So if you guys do wanna practice a little bit of your figure drawing, I would definitely say, you know, save this video for another day. Um, and also this is a really, really, really good drawing in terms of clothes figure drawing because there's so many folds in here. If you go up her body a little bit, not to distract you from your drawing right now, but I see half lock shapes in there. I see twisting folds. Um, obviously with the drop folds, I'm seeing pipe folds. Um, where the dress hits the ground right there, that's what we're gonna talk about next week, which is inert folds. So many good examples in here. So many tension points of fabric just kind of pulling and pushing. This is a perfect example for figure drawing right here, for clothed figure drawing, I should say. All right, back to the matter at hand, though. So I'm just gonna, I'm just kind of indicating the leg a little bit here. You know, it's not my primary concern. Um, if you guys want to check out some more figure drawing, go ahead and check out those videos. Here we're just trying to talk about drop folds, and I'm trying to keep myself on track with drop folds, and not go into full figure drawing mode like my brain is telling me to. So okay, we are following that ruffle texture. I can see that it's all leading back up to that point of tension, remember, that I pointed out in the beginning where I created that red dot? So it's all leading back up there, and that's how I know it's the point of tension. And then it's all just falling, or dropping, all pun intended on that one, right off of the, the dress, right? So then we're just coming down, we're looking for that zigzag where it's kind of folding in on itself, it's collapsing on itself, Again, the nature of the fabric is that it's trying to hold its shape a little bit, but we're seeing through that a little bit, right? So we are trying our best to find where this fabric is bending around and this and that. So what I do wanna say is sometimes when you're looking at this dress in particular, this is an example of using what you know and kind of making it up a little bit because it's really easy to get lost in what's going on in this dress, especially in the bottom when the shadow kicks in and it all starts to blend in. So if you do find yourself getting lost, just remember everything that we just practiced. Um, you could totally just have this end with a couple zigzags. Whatever it is, you know, you guys are the pros now. You've just practiced this four times before this. This is your fifth drawing with the drop fold. So you got it covered. I believe in you. All right, so drop folds are done. You know, this is just me adding in a little bit of detail here. I'm gonna add in a little bit of foot. And once we get some of this detail in, we can finish up this video. So last bits of detail. If you guys like, draw in that foot, draw in some of that calf a little more defined, play around with that figure. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope this cleared up a little bit of the confusion that I might have started in the beginning. Again, drop folds, they're just smashed pipe folds. It's, you know, don't overcomplicate it. Just think of it like that. If you guys have any suggestions for videos in the future, let me know. We have one more fold to get through. So we're going to talk about that next week, and I'll see you guys there. Have a great day.